This morning, we're going to talk about healing is the children's bread. And uh, I was telling the prayer team this morning that I was praying for the word all week. Usually I start working on it, you know, early in the week and work on it all throughout the week. But last night I went to bed and I had nothing. And I prayed. I said, Lord, while I'm asleep, speak to me about what message you have for in the morning. And I dreamed about it. So we're, that's what we're going to do today. I dreamed that we were all at church. And uh, I said that there is such an anointing for healing this morning, like Oral Roberts. And then I said, healing is the children's bread. And when I woke up this morning, I thought, that's, that's a strange phrase because it's not something I really use at all. And so first I Googled uh, Oral Roberts. I looked on YouTube because, you know, you forget about him because um, he's just you know, not in your face all the time. There's not news on him anymore. So the video that came up on YouTube was healing is the children's bread. I'm like, okay, Lord. And so I watched a little of the word. He just read the scripture, but I watched him do ministry at the end of it. I skipped through it and watched him do ministry. And it was so much fun to watch him because he was 1955, you know, so I don't know how old he was. He was born in 1911, I think. So he would have been 44. And, um, he was just so exuberant and, you know, it was a side of him that I hadn't really seen because I hadn't watched old videos of Oral Roberts when he was a young man. So it was fun to watch it. I watched him pray over people. I watched people get healed right there. Um, and it was interesting because he would wait until he felt the power go from him to the people that needed healing. So he would pray for him for a minute and he, he wouldn't move until you know, he touched different places of their head. And it's funny because he would go like, he's grabbing people's heads and the back of their neck and he was climbing over the back of them. And I thought, I, you know, this is just a part I just didn't remember about him. But he would wait till he could sense the, the healing virtue go out of him to pray for them. And so we're going to pray for healing this morning for sure. But uh, as I was dreaming about it, and uh, it was so funny because the Lord is like, I have so much for you. I have so much for my people. And I just want to give it all to you. And I'm like, okay, Lord, we want it all. We want it all. And I've got a couple of extra testimonies I want to share. Make sure that you write your testimonies down, can fill up the wall. It's so powerful to have people come in, especially like prophetic night. We get a lot of people that aren't from our church. And they'll begin to read and they'll be like, how did, how did that happen? How did this happen? And, you know, it really stirs up faith inside of each other when we read other people's testimony of God touching them. Amen. So we're going to start with Mark 7, and we're going to read about the healing uh, uh, is the children's bread. Mark 7, verse 25. We're just going to read a bunch of scripture, and we're going to pray for each other and go after the healing that God had spoke to me in my dream. Okay, we're going to start in verse 25, and he says... Um, Verse 25, where is it? Oh, it is. For a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him, and she came and she fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said to her, let the children be filled first, the children of Israel, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she answered him and said to him, yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for this saying, go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter. And when she had come home to her house, she found the demon gone out and her daughter lying on the bed. The demon had gone out of her daughter. And, you know, it's funny. I've been reading the Gospels again, and I'm reading in John right now. And the one thing I keep running across is let your faith bring forth what you're asking for. And we're going to turn, and we've read this recently before, but we're going to turn to Mark 8, 5, starting in verse 5. I'm sorry, Matthew 8. I knew I was supposed to flip. Matthew 8. 
starting in verse 5. And we read this a couple of weeks ago, but we're going to spend a little time on that, and then we're going to read John 15 a little bit. But it says, Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast in the outer darkness, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way. As you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed in the same hour. As you have believed, it will be done for you. Now, I'm going to read a testimony that someone just sent us from the outpouring service. And they live in um, the panhandle. And she said, uh, I, have, I have a healing testimony for you all from the service. Pastor Jean had a word about unexplainable symptoms. And I received a full healing in my foot. For many weeks now, I've had strange, sharp pains on the top of my foot into my toe. I could walk without problems. I could move my toes without pain. I could move my foot in all kinds of stretches, but there was one position that caused excruciating pain. What felt like a tendon or nerve pain, it is healed. <laughs> Praise Jesus for healing, healing that transcends distance, because she's watching online, an anointing that translates into my living room. Thank God for his power. Thank God for the gathering and your faithfulness via the internet. So, you know, when I was reading this one in Matthew 8, the Passion Translation says, go home. For what you believe for, you have. And throughout the Gospels, Jesus says, if you ask for what you want and believe without doubt, you will have it. In fact, Jean read that that. Uh, Matthew, Matthew, that's Matthew and Mark, but <laughs> do you like that? He didn't read Matthew. He read Matthew 11, 20, uh, 2 through 24. Let's just flip over there. And don't worry about it, Eddie. I didn't give that to you. Um, it says, Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. That's where our faith is. It's in God and what God has said he is going to do. Our faith is not in us. Our faith is not the anointing that Donna has or that Larry has or that John has. That, that's not where our faith is. Our faith is in God and what the word says he's going to do. And when he says move, we move. And when he says go home and believe, we go home and believe. And when he says, you know, ask for favor for that car, we ask for favor and he meets us in the favor that we need. Our faith is in who he says he is. And what he has said he will do on our behalf. Right? We talked about that last week. So, um, I forgot where I was reading. Oh, okay. Uh, he answered them and said, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain. Okay, so we're talking about a mountain that's in our way. If it's a mountain, that means it's blocking our way. Be removed and be cast into the sea. And does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he asks for. So when we believe what we've said is going to be done, then we will have what we ask for because we have faith in God and who he says he is. It's all interconnected. It's that partnership with God that he's promised us. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. What we ask for, he will give us. 
what we believe for, we have it. Because that's what his word promises us. John 15. Now you may be thinking, there's things I've believed for that I don't have yet. Has anybody thought that? But that doesn't mean he's not going to do it. How many have wrestled for breakthrough for a long time before they got it? I know I have. And how many have contended and been mad about it because it hasn't answered, because God hadn't answered it yet, but still contended? I know there have been times where I'm just like, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Then the next day I'm like, okay, God, your word says, <laughs> let's have another. It's like having a discussion with your child, telling them over and over. What it is is God is having a discussion with me through me so I can hear what the word says again, so I can believe what the word says, so I can say even though I may not see it, I know it's coming because that's what your word says. And you haven't said, no, Cindy, quit asking for that because that is not what I have for you. Right. Now, I have had the Lord tell me no before when I was praying for something. And he said no. So I quit praying for it. Because I figure if he says no to something that I'm praying for, then it may not be in the right realm that I should be praying and he literally told me no to stop praying for that. And I did. I didn't ask why, but I wanted to. I have lots of questions. I always have lots of questions for God. I'm like, God, what do you think about this? And he's always got lots of answers. But most of the time, his answers are not necessarily to the question that I ask. A lot of times he is telling me something and I'm realizing a day later, a week later, a month later that what he told me was actually provoked from the question I asked, but it wasn't an answer to that question. It's like when the, when the man, at, when Jesus asked the man, do you want to be made well? And he begins to explain Jesus all the reasons he couldn't be made well. Jesus didn't even respond to that. Jesus was like, hmm, okay, just pick up your mat and walk. You can think whatever you want to think, but I've asked you a question because I have an answer to the question that I ask you. Uh, somebody called me the other day and said, you know, the Lord keeps asking me the same question over. Do you trust me? And they were like, he asked me that almost every day. And I said, well, ask the Lord. And they said, and I keep answering them this, that, and the other. And I said, well, ask the Lord is there something I don't trust you in? Is that why you keep asking me the same question over and over? Because, you know, God wants us to communicate. He wants us to talk to him. He wants us to have that uh, full conversation with him. Even though we may not fully grasp what he's saying to us, he continues to unfold it for us. I remember, you know, when like I told you guys this, but uh, June 17th in 2019, God healed me of my Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disease. And um, I mean, I fought for that for years. And I would draw pictures of it. And I would look it up on the internet. So make sure I understood what a healthy thyroid looked like. And I would declare that that thyroid was my thyroid and that God's word said, and I would read his word over to over and over and over again, because I told him, I said, I am not letting go till I'm healed because your word has promised that. And I'll do my part, whatever it is I'm supposed to do, because I know that you will meet me there and do your part and get me fully healed. Yeah. And I woke up that Monday after Father's Day and he said, I've healed it. And I said, well, can I quit taking my medicine? I was taking a very high level of thyroid medicine. And he said, yes. And probably stopping taking the medicine was the scariest part of the answer to the prayer. Because it was scary to think you're going from taking three grams of thyroid medicine to I'm not going to take anything. And when I went back to my doctor, she's like, oh, gosh, it's gone from 0 0.005 to one point." five, nine or something. She goes, but I'd like you to take your, I told her what happened the whole nine yards. And she's like, okay, but I'd like for you to take your thyroid medicine. And I'm like, 
I don't know, it's, it's gone up a bunch. I mean, you know, it's gone from 0 0.005 to one point, I think it was 5.9. She said, yeah, but I'd like it up more. And I'm like, okay, Lord, do I take, do I take, I don't know, I don't know. And then finally I was like, enough's enough. I'm just not going to take it. I don't care what she says. And every time she's like, well, maybe if you just took a little every other day or something, I'm like, no, don't talk to me about it. Because God's already talked to me about it. And I've heard the word and I've received the word and I've taken the word. And my natural mind had a little wrestle with the word. But the word healed my thyroid. The word healed my thyroid. And even though I love my doctor, she is amazing, and she's done amazing things for me. She was the voice of doubt to make me think it's not the perfect medical number. So maybe I need to continue to take some to supplement what God didn't do. Now, that sounds stupid, doesn't it? <laughs> but, you know, your mind does have to go through a process you know, it's, it's not like God says something to us and then erases our intellect, erases our knowledge, erases what we know. Our mind has to go through a process of agreeing with the word of God that he spoke to us, that someone else spoke to us, that was written, spoke to us. At some point, our mind has to conform. Romans 2, I mean, 12, 2. We have to conform to God, to his word. And then that way we know the perfect will of God. That's what it says. So my, it took a while for my mind to conform because I had a doctor telling me, yes, but. It looks better, but. You might need to, you know. And finally, I just said, enough is enough. I believe what you say. And though I wavered not knowing what to do, I knew that I was healed. I just had to get my mind to agree with what I already knew, what my body had received, right? I don't know why I went on that tangent. But it is important because I do think that we get, uh, we wrestle with what's going on. I was telling Matt today that, um, let's see, do we go here or not? I'm just going to say it. Uh, we have not, I have not had a COVID shot, Okay. And part of the reason was is because I don't feel like I need one, number one. My immune system is very, very strong. But the other part of it is because I did go through that autoimmune, I didn't want to put some foreign particle into my body and create something um, that got it already taken care of. And I feel that peace from God not to do it. And, you know, we've got masks if that offends anybody, seriously. I mean, I know for some people this is a very heated thing. But... Um, but there is a constant pull and pressure to get vaccinated. There's a, 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 there's a constant pull, if you listen to the media at all, the people that you're around. Uh, we've got half our family that is. We've got half our family that isn't. So there's this constant pull, and you, you have your peace, and then the next thing you know, you've got this barrage of... Is it my peace or not? And you feel like you have that, that word from the Lord over what you're supposed to do. But then you get this outside pressure coming against the peace that you have. And we have to hold on to the word. And Lord, you know, remind me, what did you say to me? What did your word say? Where did I find my peace in what you have told me? I, you know, I know the Lord has told me that my body is going to be a perfect health zone. That I will live a very long life. That I just keep declaring when I had that revelation that Moses lived to 120 years old and his eyes did not grow dim and his body did not lose his vigor. I said, what about me, God? If, if you did it for Moses, you'll do it for me. If you did it for Moses, you'll do it for a generation of people. And when I wrote my book, God's Dream for Your Life, I wrote about that because I felt like the Lord said, there's such a harvest coming in. That he needs a plethora of believers yeah. 
to disciple the ones that come in. And we are the discipling generation. So as Karen says, you know, I'm going to live to 120 and I'm not going to be crawling. And that's what I just, I just keep declaring. I am going to be a perfect health zone. I am not going to be sick. I am not going to have any disease. I'm not going to, I declare all the time, I am not going to get COVID. I, I, you know, I just declare everything. There will be no disease that can come against me because I live under the word of God. And whatever tries will be defeated by the word of God. So everything that tries to come against me or come against my family, I just get the word out and I just beat it to death with the word. Amen. Amen. Every demonic force that comes against me, I beat it to death with the word. Because it is the word that's right. It is, it is written. And when we say, and I read it out loud, and I read it out loud over and over, yeah. I'll say, your word says, yeah. your word says, and I declare your word over my situation, over my finances, over my family, over my children, over my region. I declare it over our region, over our state all the time. That we will be a state that stands up and calls God the Lord of all. Yeah. That we will be a country that will no longer turn from God, but will run to God with open arms. That we will be a nation that will lead forth this revival, this harvest that is here. Yeah. And that we won't be afraid. And we won't be dismayed. And we won't be discouraged. But we will be strong and courageous because everywhere our footsteps, we will have success because that's what the word says. And if the word said it for Joshua, he said it for me. Yeah. Right? If he said it for Moses, he said it for you. So everywhere our footsteps, we will be, uh, we will leave a reverberation of the presence of God for other people to step into. It's like when the rain comes and there's a puddle, that's, that's what we're leaving. We're leaving a puddle of the Holy Spirit for other people to step into Amen. everywhere we go. So um, I am so excited. I feel like we, we are fighting the dickens out of the uh, enemy. But like I said last week, the enemy's afraid of us. That's right. And the more we declare the word, the more he trembles. Because he knows that the word activates heaven on our behalf. Yeah. That the word releases the power and the glory of God over the situation. And he does not want us to know the word. He doesn't want us to believe the word. And he definitely doesn't want us to read it out loud. But I sit in my little quiet place in the morning and I read it out loud. And then I make it personal. And I write it down. I write. I, and I write this, this, and this. And then I write it over my family because I am not going to stand here paralyzed and passive when the enemy is fiery and aggressive. So my aggression will supersede his because the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in us, right? So this is a day that, the, I know it says this is a day that the Lord has made, but this is a day that we just keep putting our, our, uh, our stake in the ground and saying no more territory. No more territory in my family. In fact, I don't think my sister watches this, but I talked to my sister the other day who is not a believer. And she's telling me that my aunt said, you know, I'd really like for you to be in heaven with us. And my sister said, usually she says, there ain't no God. There may be something big out there somewhere, but there ain't no God. And this is someone who, who got saved when she was a teenager and used to go out and evangelize. So, um, but she told me, she said, you know, I told my, I told our aunt that everybody's on their own journey and my time hasn't come yet, but it doesn't mean it won't, but it doesn't mean it will. And that's the biggest commitment. <laughs> so I'm just like, Lord, there's oil on that. I am going after that. She didn't say there isn't no God. She didn't say there's some big something out there. She started telling me about her journey, and she hasn't made it to her journey yet. And I'm like, there's oil on that. That means there's breakthrough coming. So I just, I just started going rough after that. I'm like, okay, God, here she comes. Here she comes. Because the promise God made my mom before she died was that none of her kids would be lost. 
And there's like a whole thing that goes behind it. So we declare, all of us that are believers as kids, that the promise has been made. Yeah. And we stand on the promise of God. And not one of my family will be lost. Not one of my children, not one of my grandchildren, not one of my great-grandchildren for generations to come. Because that's what the Word says. Isaiah 59, 21 says, it says that exactly. I'm just going to read it because it makes me feel good. Does anybody have a family member that needs that needs salvation? Yeah, it says, as for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them. That's us. We're them. My spirit who is upon you and my words which I put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants, says the Lord, from this time and forevermore. Yeah. That word is for us. Yeah. And we can put our family's name in there. When we say descendants, we can list every family member in there because we are fighting a war in heaven a war of a spiritual battle for our family. And we don't want to go out and save a hundred people and leave our own brother and sister behind, our own aunt and uncle behind, right? So that's a good word. I'm telling you, God is on fire on his word, right? Okay, let's go to uh, 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 whatever that is, John 15. We're going to start in verse 7, and I'm going to get something out of my journal. I brought my journal this morning. Because it's not enough for me to have a computer and to have a notepad and all that. I have to write everything down too. And I have cases of these in our closet and ch since 1999. I know it's, it's, it's really a, but I can't bring myself to get rid of them because I read through them and I'm like, God, I can't believe what you've done. I can't believe that when I prayed this, you know, five years ago, that it would look like this. I can't believe that my children, you know, I just go on and on. I just read back through. And then some of it I read and I'm like, I can't believe you wrote that down. Can I erase that? Maybe, <laughs> am I going to leave these to my kids and then I'll just erase parts of it? Because I'm like, that was just stupid. But, you know, that's how we learn. That's how we learn, right? So let's read John and then I'm going to read a couple of declarations over us. Then we're going to pray for healing. Because if God gave me a dream that he's going to heal, then God's going to do what he gave us to do, right? Yeah. But I just wanted to build our faith up a little bit on this. So John 15, verse 7. And this is probably my favorite section of John is 14 through 17. But verse 7, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified. So when we ask, the father is glorified. Because he responds so we can bear fruit. His response to us creates a bearing of fruit that will last. And so, with, so you will be my disciples. You know, when I was thinking about the word abiding. There's many definitions of it. But one of it was dwelling. You know, we're dwelling in the Lord. We're dwelling in his word. And I was thinking about, we used to have a, a cabin in uh, North Georgia in the mountains. And it was our home but we only dwelled there a couple times a year. Jesus is our home. We dwell there all the time with him. Unless we decide to make him our vacation. He's not our vacation home. He is our home. And when we dwell in him and he dwells in us. He answers what we ask for because he is to bring glory to the father through the answer of our request just think about that at some point he says you have not because you ask not our whole asking and receiving is to bring glory to the father is to exalt him to testify to who jesus is right so I'm not shy to ask because it says that my request bring glory to the Father. And when I ask, I'm given it. And the Father is exalted and he is raised up high. And he is, he is illuminated before all things. When I told my sister that God healed me of Hashimoto's, and I told her not long after it happened, she said, wow. 
she said, God must have something really special for you that he would heal you. Now, think about that. I said, well, he's got something special for you, too. She's like, I don't know about that. But just the testimony plants the seed to get ready for the harvest of the heart that's already been prepared for him. Come on, that's such a good word. Come on, Lord. I was just crying this morning when we were singing that song about uh, 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 the goodness of God. All my life you've been faithful. All my life you've been so, so good. I was just like, God, just even saying that, I was think, I just live out of the goodness of God. And I don't understand God fully. Nobody does. But he shows us these things, and you're like, who am I that you are so faithful to me? Who am I, God? The scripture says that you're mindful of me. When he thinks about something, he thinks about us. He's not thinking about whether that oak tree is going to make it to 15 or 20 feet. He's thinking about Vivian. He's thinking about you. He's thinking about Grace. He's like, here's her full-time job and her increase. He's, that's what he's thinking about. How do I position them in the place that I have for them so they can have the fullness of me and produce the kingdom product that I've called them to do? That's what God thinks about. Yeah. That's what he thinks about. Verse 11. Two. No, we didn't do nine, did we? As the Father loved me, I have also loved you. Dwell in my love. Just dwell in it. So as the Father has loved Jesus, Jesus has loved us the same way the Father loves him. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, dwell in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I've spoken to you that my joy may remain in you. So when we need joy, we just put our hands on our belly and just resurrect it inside of us because his joy remains in us already. Yeah. I don't need the outside world to bring us joy. I, I have the joy of the Lord in me. And it's attached to the love that he has for me. And that joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no, uh, no one than this that I lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command. Who wants to do whatever he commands? We all do. In one of those songs it, it talked about, and, and, and I surrender. I just surrender it all to you because there is nothing else. I lay it all at your feet. I am fully surrendered unless I'm not. And if I'm not, then God, I'm sure you're going to show me where I'm not. Because in my heart, I feel fully surrendered. But there may be things that give you a little pushback. So if they are, just show me. And I'll surrender that too. No longer do I call you servants, for servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends because we know what the master is doing. We know. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. Say, God chose me. Just think about that. God chose me. And appointed you that you will go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask. Whatever you ask the Father in my name. He may give you. These things I command you. That you love one another. It's funny how all of this is tied to love. Right. All of it's tied to love. I love you like the Father's loved me. So my joy can be complete in you. Whatever you ask for the Father. He'll give you that you love one another. It's all tied in love. So here are, my, here are some of my declarations. I just wanted to clear them over us, and then we're going to pray, right? Oh, I hope I didn't bring the wrong one. I have lots of these. That's Chuck. I think I 
did. Well, here's one of them that I, I, I wrote out of, out of John as I was reading it. It says, I confess you as Lord and Savior. I believe and I commit myself to your words and to your presence. Your dominion lasts forever. I walk in your light, Jesus. Your spirit lives in me. You are my God. And I have an excellent spirit in me. And I want to read you one other little testimony here that, that uh, Rivka wrote. She says, the adversary didn't want me to post a testimony as I was writing it disappeared. I had a bad case of vertigo a couple months ago and was treated with meds. Um, then the gathering did a 30-day face with daily activations. The results for me were many downloads from the Lord and an increased measure of faith and authority that impacted the way I pray and declare his name. About a week and a half ago, I got vertigo again. And this time I thought, oh, no, you don't. This does not come from God. Therefore, you have no authority to remain in my body. As I began to declare over my body, after a couple of days, the Lord said, it will dissipate and disappear. This encouraged me to keep declaring and believing what he said. He said, a few days I got better than worse. But I knew what he said to me and what his word says. And I continued to declare his words to me. After then, uh, and then after a week of it, came a suddenly. I awoke from a night's sleep and it was completely gone. I hope this is an encouragement to someone. Amen.